Samuel Nicholas was the first officer commissioned in the United States Continental Marines and by tradition is considered to be the first commandant of the Marine Corps. Early life Nicholas was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1744 to Andrew and Mary Shute Nicholas. His father was a blacksmith and his uncle was Atwood Shute, the mayor of Philadelphia. Nicholas was educated at the College of Philadelphia. Nicholas was a Freemason of the Masonic Lodge that met at Tun Tavern. Military Service On 5 November 1775, Nicholas was commissioned a Captain of Marines by the Second Continental Congress, which was the first commission issued in the Continental Naval Service. His commission was confirmed in writing on 28 November 18 days after the Continental Congress resolved on 10 November 1775, that two battalions of Marines be raised consisting of one colonel, two lieutenant colonels, two majors, and other officers, as usual in other regiments, that they consist of an equal number of privates with other battalions, that particular care be taken that no persons be appointed to officers, or enlisted into said battalions, but such as a good seaman, or so acquainted with maritime affairs as to be able to serve by sea when required, that they be enlisted and commissioned to serve for enduring the present war with Great Britain and the colonies unless dismissed by order of Congress, that they be distinguished by the names of the 1st and 2nd Battalion of Marines. Captain Nicholas No. sooner received official confirmation of his appointment to office than he established recruiting headquarters at Tun Tavern, Philadelphia, by January 1776. Having recruited a sufficient number of Marines to man the vessels that comprised the Continental Navy in the waters of Philadelphia, Captain Nicholas assumed command of the Marine Detachment on board the Alfred. With Commodore S. E. K. Hopkins in command, Alfred set sail from Philadelphia on the morning of 4 January 1776. The following month witnessed the baptismal fire of the Marines. Battle of Nassau, Lord Dunmore, with the British force under his command, had collected a store of arms and provisions at New Providence, in the Bahamas, and had done a great deal of injury along the colonial coast, particularly the shore of Virginia. Commodore Hopkins had been ordered to proceed to Obaco in the Bahamas, and from there to operate against the force of Lord Dunmore. Here the Commodore decided to make an attack on New Providence, capture the enemy's stores and cripple his supplies. Captain Nicholas was placed in command of the landing party, which consisted of 234 Marines. This, the first successful landing engaged in by Continental Marines, led to the capture of Nassau on 3 March 1776 without a fight. On 6 April 1776, the Marines participated in the first naval battle between an American squadron and the British, when His Majesty's ship Glasgow came across the path of the squadron. Promoted to Major, on 25 June 1776, Congress placed Nicholas at the head of the Marines with the rank of Major. Accordingly, Commodore Hopkins was advised to send Major Nicholas to Philadelphia with dispatches for the Continental Congress. With notification of his promotion, he was ordered to report to the Marine Committee. The committee detached him from Alfred and ordered him to remain in the city to discipline four companies of marines and prepare them for service as marine guards for the frigates on the stocks, having recruited and thoroughly organized four companies. He requested arms and equipment for them, 1776-1779. In December 1776, he wrote Congress, the enemy having overrun the jerseys, and our army being greatly reduced. I was ordered to march with three of the companies to be under the command of His Excellency, the Commander-in-Chief. This was the first example of a battalion of Marines about to serve as an actual fighting unit under the direct command of Army Authority. The Marines did not, however, engage in the attack on Trenton. 
On 26 December 1776 which followed General George Washington's crossing of the Delaware River, they were attached to General John Cadwallader's division, which was ordered to cross the Delaware to Burlington, New Jersey, south of Trenton. In concert with Washington's crossing to the north on the night of 25 December 1776 but was turned back due to ice flows on the river. After the First Battle of Trenton, the battalion of Marines under the command of Marge, Nicholas participated in battle with a detachment of Cornwallis's main army at Princeton, New Jersey. During the ensuing months Nicholas's battalion served both as infantry and artillery, participating in several skirmishes. Following the British evacuation of Philadelphia in June 1778, marine barracks were re-established and recruiting resumed. From then until the close of the war, Nicholas's duties at Philadelphia were somewhat similar to those of later commandants. Moreover, he was actively in charge of recruiting, and at times acted as muster master of the Navy. On 20 November 1779, he wrote Congress requesting that he be put in charge of the Marine Detachment aboard America, then in process of construction. But Congress was firm in its intention that Nicholas remain in Philadelphia, return to civilian life. After the disbandment of the Continental Marines and Navy following the end of the American Revolutionary War in 1783, Nicholas returned to civilian life and became an original member of the Pennsylvania Society of the Cincinnati. He died 27 August 1790, in Philadelphia during an epidemic of yellow fever and is buried in the Friends Graveyard at Arch Street Friends Meeting House. Legacy Three ships in the United States Navy have been named us Nicholas in his honor. On 10 November of each year, the date celebrated as the Marine Corps' birthday, Nicholas' grave in the Arch Street Friends Meeting Graveyard in Philadelphia is marked with a wreath at dawn by a group of Marines.